I think social media is the biggest threat to humanity today. And the reason I think that is because social media brings out the worst in everyone. Social media brings out what is unacceptable behavior in real life. It's okay to do this online. I think part of the problem is social media compared to real life. In real life, there are boundaries. You go to work, you go to school, you interact with a few people for a few hours a day. You don't have to interact with everyone around the world 24-7, 365, right? You just deal with a few people for a few hours, then you go home and you separate yourself from everyone else, right? There's a decompression time, and that's very important, where on social media, there are no boundaries. You're constantly being assaulted. People are assaulting your boundaries, your identity, your values. Think about it. Every time you look at social media on your computer or on your phone, you're being assaulted by someone. And the reason social media affects people in such a negative way is just the way human beings are naturally wired. There's psychological and physiological reasons why sometimes we can get angry or get negative and kind of explode. Think about people in real life. Think about you in real life. You deal with people for a few hours a day, work, school, whatever. You, you start getting wound up, but eventually the work day is over. You go home and decompress. But if somebody comes along while you're kind of wound up and they push the right buttons, you'll get angry and you might actually explode. Now, this is far less likely in real life because it would take something unusual to push the right button and get you to blow up like that. But online, this happens constantly. Online, you're bombarded with constant negativity. As long as you're on that social media site with all of those other negative people, naturally, their negativity is going to infect you. Negativity is viral. It likes to spread. There's also an element of online, you are kind of anonymous. You're not really identifiable. And when we're anonymous, we act in more inappropriate ways than typically we would act in real life. Think about when you're in traffic. You're stuck in traffic maybe and you get angry, you start yelling because it's rush hour traffic or even worse, traffic is moving. You're driving along, somebody pulls out in front of you or cuts you off in traffic. What do you do? You probably yell, you probably curse, you roll down the window, you might even scream at the other driver, you might flip him the bird, right? And this is something that in most of your life, you wouldn't act that way. You'll act that way in traffic because in the confines of your car, you're relatively anonymous. No one's going to recognize you, likely, especially if you live in a big city, right? You kind of can act in this anonymous way where you can say crazy things, do crazy things, things that normally you wouldn't think that kind of behavior is something you're capable of. But in traffic, a lot of times, the worst behavior imaginable kind of comes out. And I mentioned negativity, it kind of spreads. Many times, people that are normally very calm, very relaxed in life will get in their car, very calm, very relaxed, and they're driving in a calm manner. But now, once they get into traffic and all of these other really high-stressed, angry people are driving around them, all of a sudden, the stress starts to build in them, and then they become angry, and that's how it is. You know, you really can't be around angry people and not become angry yourself. There have been many scientific studies done, both on adults and children, that actually verify why people act so badly on social media. So when people are in a situation where they're relatively anonymous, where they're not identifiable, we have done studies where people will actually steal from each other. They'll verbally assault each other, physically assault each other, because as long as they're not identifiable, it's okay. But the moment that somebody can actually identify you, they know exactly who you are, you're far less likely to steal from them or assault them in some way. And that kind of makes sense. Think about the laws of most nations of the world. There's probably a law against stealing and killing people and assaulting people. Are those laws actually necessary? For most people in real life, no. Those laws, they don't actually prevent people from doing those things. Common sense typically prevents people from doing those things. Actually, the fact that people can identify me prevents me from doing that. For example, imagine me and my neighbor. We both have uh, some property and you know, I don't steal from my neighbor because he knows exactly who I am. If he could identify me as the person that stole his property, well, he could come and do the same thing to me. He could steal my stuff, or he could assault me, or he could kill me for stealing from him. As long as I'm anonymous, then I'm much more likely to actually do those 
immoral things or illegal things. Speaking of more scientific studies, it's also a well-known fact that people tend to act more aggressive, more angry in a crowd. It's called mob mentality. It's why when a riot starts, people that normally would never act that way join in. It's because no one can identify me. If there's hundreds or thousands of people acting out in this manner, then there's no real way anybody's going to point out little old me and that gigantic crowd. So therefore, yeah, I'll loot. I'll steal, you know, I'll set something on fire because it doesn't matter. If it was just me doing it, there's absolutely no way I would act in that manner. So mob mentality and the fact that online you're not really identifiable, are you starting to see why social media sites like Facebook and Twitter, they're petri dishes for negativity. In fact, Twitter and Facebook and other social media sites are actually designed to actually foster negativity. Why? It's because negativity is addictive, and obviously if you're addicted to negativity, then you're much more likely to hang out on those negative platforms for hours on end, and of course that makes Facebook and Twitter and these other social sites a lot of money. And when I say negativity is addictive, think about all the people you know in life. You probably know someone or several people that are really negative. Everyone knows that really negative person that is always in a bad mood, is always complaining about something 24-7. They're just constant negativity. It just radiates off of them. Why are they negative? It's because negativity is addictive and they become addicted to their negativity. They actually love their negativity. They depend on that negativity. They would never give it up. And this is what social media is designed to do. It's designed to foster that negativity in you. It's designed to foster negativity in people that otherwise wouldn't be maligned with this kind of angry behavior. What they have essentially done is they've turned all of these social network users into negativity addicts. And these addicts, they constantly need their fix. What I find really odd is that all of these negative people on social media, many of them actually think their negativity is a positive. When they're expressing all of this anger and negative behavior, they actually see it as a positive force in life. They think venting their frustrations about whatever, that's actually a positive, productive thing to do. Now, it should be obvious to everyone that being negative is not productive, it's not a positive force in life, and the reason that is, using a little bit of logic and common sense, everything has a certain amount of energy that it can expend, including human beings. We have energy. We have a fuel tank, right? Eventually, we'll reach empty. We only have a limited amount of energy that we can expend every day. And if you're constantly expending that energy on things that are not productive, such as being negative on social media, think about all of those wasted hours you spend on Facebook and Twitter and Reddit, the comment sections on YouTube, and all these other social media aspects on the internet. A true social media addict probably spends hours of their energy every day on social media sites and being negative. Imagine if they taken some of that energy, and their energy isn't infinite. We only have a finite amount of energy. If they'd have, instead of wasted that energy on that negativity, actually done something truly productive with that energy. They could have read a book, learned something that they didn't know before. They could have worked on a hobby, worked on a project. They could have went to the gym. They could have practiced their religion. They could have went and visited friends and family and been positive around friends and family, real life friends and family, not negative with those social media friends that they have. As someone that grew up before the World Wide Web, I can say that the birth of the web definitely changed the world, and in many ways it changed the world in a positive way. We are much more of a global community now. We're much more connected, not to mention that information is much more accessible than it was prior to the birth of the World Wide Web, and especially information is accessible to the poor, the downtrodden, the kind of people that wouldn't have access to basic education in many cases now have access to all the information that is out there on the internet. But social media is tearing us apart, and I fear it's only going to get worse from here. I'm actually starting to see people in real life acting the same way that they act on Twitter. Now, the lines have been blurred. They don't see a difference. Used to, people would act a certain way on Twitter and Facebook, but then in 
real life, they turn the switch. They flip the switch and start acting like a normal human being again. That's actually not the case with many people now. I see more and more people, they don't have that switch that they turn off. Now they're acting exactly the same way they act on Twitter in real life. And I gotta be honest, that scares me. And I think it should scare you too. Peace, guys.